Hi, this is Clutch, and this is the truth of love. Today's topic, resentment towards an ex. Now, this is a particular topic that tends to get brought up fairly consistent in the coaching practices that I usually partake in, mainly because the people that tend to reach out are still processing a breakup or they're still going through the analogies of potentially getting an ex back. And of course, the number one question is, why do I feel this resentment, this hate towards my ex? And the truth is that anger is a normal human emotion, especially in times of loss. You feel frustration, you feel fear, you feel isolated, you feel betrayed. And the thing is with anger is that anger in particular tends to be a secondary emotion. It's not directly attributed to something, but rather a reaction to something. And of course, the feeling of resentment is a primary reason for this. It's the notion that I feel that I was taking advantage of. I feel that you did not invest everything that you should have invested in the relationship. But of course, what happens in a situation where that's no longer our choice when we deal with an ex who has dumped us, um, in many cases, in a really ruthless and a discarded way? How do we deal with the pain and the inability to accept what's happened? Well, the truth is, we have to first come to terms with where these feelings come from feelings of inferiority, feelings of insecurity, and most importantly, these feelings of anger, as I mentioned. Anger is a good motivating practice. It causes us to get out and do something. In fact, anger's main purpose is to motivate us to get away from predators or to fight a predator. Everyone's heard the term in fight or flight. But in modern society, in the structure that we've developed, dangers like this no longer exist, at least not from the animal kingdom. So of course, we're left with our emotions and we're left sitting absolutely still, being unable to run, being unable to go anywhere, which of course causes further anxiety. This is oftentimes why I usually recommend to my clients that they have a change of scenery at home, whether it's they have an opportunity to go out and travel, which I know with the current COVID situation isn't a possibility for most of you, whether or not they go around rearranging a bedroom or rearranging their living style, your brain has to believe that you're moving from place to place. And the reason for this, of course, is that if you have moved from place to place, you tend to be out of danger. You tend to let go of that anxiety. But there's something else that comes into mind, especially after the shock and the awe of the breakup has worn off. And that's us looking at our exes and trying to analyze what our ex is thinking. I would say probably half of my calls are individuals trying to get into the mindset of their ex. What is it they're thinking? Why are they doing this? What is their rationality? And why are they being so cruel? And the truth is, I can't provide you with that answer. Instead, what I can provide an answer with is why you're reacting the way you are and why you are internalizing the blame of the breakup. After all, you're the one that's reaching out to me, not your ex. And in those particular cases, the only person that I can help are the people that want the help. Much like in the case of your ex, if they have broken up with you, they've broken up with you with the idea and the notion that they can do better, as painful as that is to hear. And in many cases, they might be correct. They might find someone or they might be with someone that is more aligned with their foundations. But does that mean that they are going to truly be happy in the long term? Most relationships are a risk. We jump into it with this notion that it can either make or break us. In fact, it's a motivation that's so large that we're able to take huge amount of risks in order to do it. But those risks and those costs are usually paid at the demise of the relationship, especially if we happen to be the dumpy in that situation. So, of course, we're left with this notion of what now? What do I do with this resentment? How do I deal with this resentment towards the ex? And the truth is, resentment is a normal process. It's normal to feel resentful towards someone that did not give you a level of appreciation. It is normal to feel resentful towards someone who did not give it their all to save the relationship. But by no means does that guarantee that this particular person owes you that effort. Instead, what we have to look at is we have to look at why are we attracted to that particular kind of person in the first place? 
that understanding of being able to look at a situation without rose tinted glasses and to be able to determine why, if at all, you fell for this kind of person in the first place. What was it about this kind of person that caused you to be attached? What is it about this particular person that causes you so much pain and suffering? This is one of the paradoxes regarding being in a relationship. It's both the cause of great anxiety as well as great satisfaction. It's the satisfaction, or at least the addiction to the satisfaction, that we try, in most part, to replicate in future relationships. But at the same time, if we put our exes on a pedestal and we put our next partner, whoever we happen to be dating, on a comparison to this pedestal, we're going to end up with an unsustainable equation. We are going to end up in a resentful situation. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would ask that you hit the thumbs up icon below. For those of you that haven't subscribed, I would highly recommend that you do. And of course, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, information regarding that can be found on my website at www.thetruthoflove.net, or you can send me a quick email at clutch.tol at gmail.com. With that said, this is Clutch, signing off.